In this video, I'm covering my top, well, pretty much all my tips to help you stay cool, whether you're indoors or out without air conditioning. I want to shoot this outdoors, but we finally got some rain, and there's no air conditioning in this room, so we'll see how long I last for. So here's the thing. We all love going outdoors. We hate being too hot when we're outdoors, and we're all trying to prevent ourselves from overheating and dying. I mean, that's just kind of built into our DNA as human beings. But here's the problem. It's hot outside, and it's only getting hotter. Extreme heat warnings have impacted over 100 million people in the U.S. alone, and thousands of people have already died this year from extreme heat-related deaths, both in the U.S. and abroad. And the sad thing is, most of these deaths are entirely preventable if you know how to keep your body cool. I want you all to enjoy the outdoors, and I don't want these same things to happen to you and your loved ones, so I created this video to help you stay cool, indoors or out, without air conditioning. So without further ado, let's get cool. So a few quick things about me. I've spent the last 20, 25 years uh, as an avid outdoorsman, hiking and backpacking and traveling pretty much all over the country. So I've been in pretty much every major climate zone in the United States. But especially interesting is that my wife and I both lived in an apartment for eight years without air conditioning here in central Pennsylvania, where daytime temps could get into the mid to high 90s and the lows only got to maybe the uh, mid to upper 80s. But we learned how to stay cool living in that apartment. So some of these tips are really, really hard ones. So let's get started with a few general tips. Then I'll jump into some specific tips that you can do at home to help you stay cool in your house. And then I will go into uh, some tips for outdoors for when you want to stay cool when you're outdoors. And then wrap up with a couple of material considerations. And then hopefully jump outside to show you some of my favorite ways of wearing our products to help you stay cool when you're outdoors in the heat. So staying cool comes down to a few just really big basic things. The first one is the most obvious and that's blocking heat gain from the sun. Again, whether you're indoors or outdoors, you can gain heat from the sun. So we wanna prevent that as much as possible. The next thing we wanna do is manage our metabolism. So uh, our metabolism is basically all the functions in our body that help keep us alive. They all produce heat. And so the more we raise our metabolism, the more heat we generate and produce. So we want to be able to manage our metabolism correctly so that we can stay cool when we really need to. So we want to be doing those two major things while also helping to increase evaporative cooling and convective and a little bit of conductive cooling as well. Those are big words. You're pretty much already familiar with what they stand for, so they'll make sense as we go through these tips. The first thing you need to understand is temperature. Temperature is just the average measure of heat in a given area. And there are three different ways you can measure temperature and they're all very different and tell us very different things. The first one that we're most familiar with is just the ambient air temperature. And that's the temperature you see in weather reports, whether in your newspaper, online, or on the weather channel. And this temperature just measures the amount of, uh, measures the air temperature in a given area. But the big thing to understand is that, uh, two big things to understand is that the temperature is for a given area. So, uh, and it's an average. So you could be in the hotter part of the town or the cooler part of the town and the temperature they're gonna tell you is uh, the temperature that's in the middle. But the other big thing is that ambient air temperature is measured in the shade. So that's not in the sun, which is why when you're told it's 90 degrees outside and you go in your car and your car's thermometer is maybe reading over 100 degrees, that's a big difference. And so an ambient air temperature is not gonna give you the full picture as to how the weather is going to impact you outside. The second one is the heat index. And this is basically just a marriage between the ambient air temperature and the relative humidity at, at any given point. As humidity levels uh, raise and go up, our ability to lose heat through sweating goes down. So that's why when it's when it's hotter, hotter and stickier outside, or why it's stickier outside, it feels hotter to us because our bodies are not able to evaporate or sweat to help keep us cool. But the big thing about this as well is that it's also just an average between the relative humidity and the temperature for a given area, and they're both measured in the shade, which doesn't give us the whole picture. The last temperature, it's the least common and it's kind of tougher to find, is called the wet bulb temperature. Now this takes into account pretty much all the factors that go into um, how we'll feel outside. They take a thermometer, they wrap it in a wet piece of cloth to replicate 100% relative humidity, and they actually put it in the sun. So you get a much better idea of how the outside temperature is going to affect you at any given point. A wet bulb temperature of 95 degrees Fahrenheit or 35 degrees Celsius uh, is a really hot temperature. Humans can only survive for about six hours theoretically in 95 degree uh, wet bulb temperatures. Now you compare that to 
someplace like in the Southwest, like in Arizona, where they you know, typically experience high 90s to triple digit uh, heat with low relative humidity, you know, those, those temperatures aren't gonna impact uh, a human being as much as a wet bulb temperature will. So a little theoretical, but it's just important to know that different uh, temperatures are really telling you different things. And then all of those are basically just averages. So you really need to understand how the temperature is going to affect you at any given point. Okay, so let's get into the tips. I've broken these down into a couple general tips that apply anywhere, have specific tips on how to stay cool indoors and out. Then I'll go outside and show you a few of my favorite ways to beat the heat with our Marine World products. You won't want to miss that. Okay, so for general tips, the first one is the most important one of all of them, and that is to drink water. None of these other tips will make any difference if you're not drinking enough water. Otherwise, you risk dehydration and overheating and possibly even death. In normal conditions, you should be drinking half of your body weight in ounces of water at a minimum. So if you weigh 100 pounds, you should be drinking about 50 ounces of water. If you're 200 pounds, you should be drinking at least 100 ounces of water per day at a minimum, not taking into account higher temperatures or activity levels. In extreme heat and high exertion, you could be losing up to three to four quarts of water through your sweat per hour. So knowing those two things, you wanna make sure you adjust accordingly depending on uh, the temperature and your activity levels. If you are well hydrated, you can avoid most problems related to overheating. You'll know that you're drinking enough water if you're peeing often and your, the color of your pee is pretty clear to lightly yellow. Now with drinking a lot of water, you also want to make sure that you're getting enough electrolytes in your system as well. If you don't, that can lead to a lot of really uh, bad situations, especially you know from lighting, from cramping to uh, seizures and eventually death. Because we sweat out and pee out a lot of electrolytes and the more water we're putting through, we're flushing a lot of those out. Fortunately, they're very, very easy to replace. You can replace your electrolytes with things like uh, supplements, uh, sports drinks, or even fruit juice. One of my favorite ways is just to add a pinch of salt to a glass of orange juice to uh, get those electrolytes in and also increase my sodium intake. And I typically aim for a quart of um, like a sports drink or a uh, fruit juice mixture uh, every uh, three to four quarts that I'm drinking throughout the day. Tip number two is just stay out of the sun. I mean, this is pretty self-explanatory, but the more exposure you get to the sun, the hotter you're going to be. General tip number three is to make sure to not eat heavy meals during the hottest part of the day. Food is fuel and will cause your body to heat up after eating, just like throwing wood on a fire would do the same thing. So you wanna make sure you eat your heavier meals in the morning or in the evening during the cooler parts of the day and to eat lighter foods or smaller amounts throughout the hottest parts of the day. This is a time where eating fruit, especially watermelon, is a great idea to do. Tip number four is to rest. You wanna stay inactive as much as possible, especially during the hottest parts of the day. As your activity level increases, so does your body heat and overall temperature. If you do have to be active during the day, especially outside, do it during the cooler parts of the day, again in the morning and the evening, and rest during the hottest parts of the day. And tip number five is to wear as little as possible and expose as much of your skin as possible as long as you're out of the direct sun. Bare skin is the most effective way our body can lose heat. And even wearing a little bit of clothing reduces our skin's ability to lose heat to the environment. I'm already sweating in here. Okay, so for staying cool in your home without air conditioning, you wanna make sure you're following those general tips that I just mentioned, plus the following. Number one, Put a thermometer in where you'll be living or sleeping. One that tracks humidity is a plus. And use this to gauge the temperature around you versus what the weather report says. As I mentioned before, the temperature that the weatherman gives you is just a general for your area. You could be in a hotter part of town, a cooler part of town, and for lots of other factors, where you actually live and sleep could be a lot warmer or a lot cooler. So the best way to know is to get a thermometer for that specific space. And as you can tell, it's getting pretty warm in here. I might need to turn a fan on. Hope that's not too much of a distraction. And so for tip number two is obviously use as many fans as you possibly can wherever you will be. Without air conditioning, this is the next best thing you can use to help you stay cool. Fans help our bodies to evaporate sweat faster so that our bodies can cool down quickly. If you have additional fans, position them so they pull cooler air from the cooler part of your house to the warmer part of your house. This also works well if you have air conditioning and need to help pull some of that cooler air to a warmer part of the house that does not have air conditioning. Additionally, you can place a bowl of water or ice water in front of the fan to help provide a little bit more cooling as well. At home, tip number three 
If it's really humid, run your dehumidifier. Humidity holds a lot of heat and prevents our sweat from evaporating effectively to keep us cool. So running a dehumidifier will lower the amount of humidity in your home and increase your skin's evaporative cooling ability. Tip number four, get as low in your house as possible. Basements and lower floors will be much cooler than upper floors. At the same time, those upper floors will provide additional insulating ability from the sun and hot air. If you live high up in something like an apartment building where it's just extremely hot, try and stay with someone lower in the building or visit friends and family in cooler places. For those eight years, my wife and I lived in a second story apartment that sat on top of a garage. So those few nights where it got really hot and unbearable or during the day when it got really hot and unbearable, we would simply go downstairs to the garage area. And it was amazing how big the difference was between that floor and the lower floor. And we were able to stay much more comfortable and cool down there. Speaking of our apartment, these next two tips are kind of combined and they were kind of a, a daily ritual for me to help keep our place cool without air conditioning. These two tips include opening and closing your windows, curtains and blinds correctly to help keep the inside cooler. At night when the temperature drops, you wanna make sure you open up all of your windows, curtains and blinds to allow that cool air to start coming into your home. You can also position a fan in front of one of the windows or as many of the windows as you can to help pull that air in faster. Then you can place additional fans higher up to help blow the hot air out. And this is pretty much exactly what we did each night. We'd open up all of our windows and we would place a fan in front of the one, turn on high so it pulled the cold air in. And then we actually had a basically a house fan in the apex of the apartment and that would pull the hot air out from the top. So that created a nice little kind of cool convective cycle uh, that helped cool down the space relatively quickly. Then on the flip side, in the morning, you wanna make sure you close all of your windows, curtains and blinds, to help trap as much of that cool air inside as possible while keeping out as much of the sunlight as possible. The curtains and blinds will help block additional sunlight from coming in and, and making your space a lot warmer. If you don't have curtains or they're not effective enough, use heavier blankets, objects, or even clothing to help block the sunlight. Again, this will help prevent your space from warming up from that sunlight coming in. And I think at our apartment, uh, the one window we didn't have a curtain for, I used a cereal, an empty cereal box and actually a t-shirt hung on a hanger that hung on the top of the, the window itself. And uh, that was really effective at blocking out the sunlight coming into the space. Even better, use something like a space blanket or this Reflectix material on your windows to help block out a lot of sunlight. This is an incredibly effective way at keeping your space a lot cooler. As a small example, my wife decided to uh, repaint our front door in the middle of uh, the summer. And our house is a south facing home, so it gets sunlight all day long. And with the door off of there, I was concerned that a lot of heat would be coming in from the sun and hung a, a space blanket from the door frame. And it actually worked better than the door being there itself. It blocked a lot of sunlight and kept our space a lot cooler. So if you have a space blanket and you have some windows or doorways that uh, let in a lot of sunlight, simply taping those up will help block a lot of sun and keep your space a lot cooler. Tip number seven, use cold showers and baths to help lower your body temperature, especially when it's really humid outside. If humidity is really high, sweating won't work very well to keep you cool, so this might be the only real way you have to help lower your body temperature. Alternatively, you can dip your face, elbows, hands, or feet in cold water to help lower your body temperature as well. Tip number eight is kind of a repeat of one I mentioned before, and that's to wear as little clothing as possible. If you're inside, you're out of the sunlight, and so this is a great reason to be as naked as you want around your house. Again, bare skin is the best way our body has to lose heat, so be as naked as you want to around your house because you will feel much more cooler than even wearing a small amount of clothing. Tip number nine is to use a wet towel or wet piece of clothing around your neck to help increase evaporative cooling where it matters most. Not only can you experience up to 10 degrees of cooling this way, but by having it around your neck, you're allowing the blood flowing to your head to cool down and prevent your head from overheating. Tip number 10 to help you sleep better at night, and we did this quite often when it was really, really hot at night to sleep, and that's to take a wet towel, washcloth, or piece of clothing again, and put it on your naked upper body or your head to help increase evaporative cooling. We would also place a fan at the foot of our bed to increase that evaporative cooling, and this was kind of our, our best tip for being able to fall asleep in really hot temperatures. Okay, so now while staying indoors is really your best way of staying cool and staying out of the sun, when you do go outdoors, be sure to follow these tips. Tip number one is simply just to stay in the shade and out of the sun as much as possible, especially during the hottest parts of the day. This is your absolute best way of staying cooler. Tip number two is again to just move as little as possible, especially during the hottest parts of the day. 
The less you're active, the cooler you will stay. Tip number three is a big one, and that is to wear light, loose-fitting clothing that have a high ultralight protection factor or UPF rating, and that also wick well and breathe well. The first thing you wanna do with your clothing is to cover as much of your skin as possible to help block as much sunlight as possible from reaching your skin. So bringing this all down, the thinner the clothing, the better, but do keep UPF in mind. You don't wanna wear thick layers which are just going to trap your body's heat. Also, lighter colored clothing is going to reflect more sunlight than darker colored clothing. You wanna make sure your layers are nice and loose so that you have increased air circulation throughout your layers. You also wanna make sure to wear your shirts untucked and open up your cuffs and other buttons as much as possible to help increase venting. And with your clothing, the higher the UPF rating or the ultralight protection factor, the better. You're looking for clothes that have at least a 30 uh, up to 50 UPF rating, 50 being the greatest. The higher the UPF rating, the more sunlight it's going to block from penetrating your skin and the cooler you will be. Wicking and breathability are also very important as they allow your body's heat and sweat to escape more easily, which helps keep you cooler. If it's not too humid, you can wet part of your clothing or all of your clothing to help increase evaporative cooling. This will help you to feel several degrees cooler than the temperature outside. And then later on in the video, I will break down the different material types and how they respond in hot weather so you can make smart decisions about which clothing to wear to help you stay cooler. Whew, that was a big one. Tip number four is to wear a hat, especially a broad brimmed hat. Putting a handkerchief under a ball cap also works and I'll show you how to do that later in this video. The important thing to point out with uh, caps, with ball caps especially, is to make sure that you're wearing uh, more of a solid type material rather than this kind of mesh material uh, if you're gonna be out in the sun a lot. I've noticed that uh, as I'm getting older, my hair is thinning a little bit back there, that this, uh, this mesh allows a lot of sunlight to come through. And so even though it allows my head to breathe and release heat a lot better, I'm getting much more sun coming in and burning my scalp. So uh, I tend to use a little bit more of a solid um, hat like this that blocks more sunlight. Or if I'm going to wear a hat like this, to definitely um, wear something underneath it like a marine wool handkerchief to help keep the sun off and help keep me cool. Tip number five is on any exposed skin left over after putting on your clothes is to use a high SPF sunblock that is also broad spectrum, meaning that it blocks both UVA and UVB rays from penetrating your skin and causing you to heat up. So you wanna make sure you're using at least an SPF 15 sunscreen. Uh, this one's a 60. Um, the higher the number, the better it will be at blocking sunlight. But the important thing to also keep in mind is that every sunscreen is a little bit different, so you wanna make sure you follow the instructions on the back of the bottle to know when to reapply, if it's uh, sweat resistant, water resistant, things like that, because they can easily wear off, and uh, it also gives you an idea of how long you can go before between coatings uh, on your skin. So reapply often and follow the instructions on the back of the bottle. Tip number six to help you stay cool outside is one that most people don't think about and might make you feel foolish, but is in fact a really, really great way to stay cool, and that's to use an umbrella. Now, believe it or not, umbrellas were originally invented by the Romans thousands of years ago as a way to stay cool. They were not invented to prevent them from getting wet from rain. Now, this umbrella in particular is coated with a reflective material on the outside of it uh, to help block and reflect as much sunlight as possible. So all you gotta do, is open it up and you've got instant shade wherever you go. And these are incredibly helpful when you're in exposed areas like um, uh, mountain ridges, above tree line, or especially in the desert where there's just so little shade. And by employing it like this, you're helping yourself to stay really cool and keeping most of the sun's rays off of your body. I hope I don't get seven years bad luck now. Tip number seven is to carry and use a space blanket to help you keep cool. These work great as a, uh, as a sun shelter. You can rig them up in like an A-frame and sit underneath and with the reflective side facing outwards. Typically in cold weather, when you wanna stay warm using these things, you wanna make sure the reflective side is, in, is inwards to reflect your body heat back to you. You're simply just gonna reverse that with a sun shelter and uh, have the reflective side outside so it blocks the sunlight from penetrating your skin. This is a absolutely great way of staying uh, cool especially when you're in like exposed or really hot areas like deserts. So I always pack a space blanket uh, year round to help me stay warm and stay cool. So use a space blanket, that's tip number seven. Tip number eight is simply to go for a swim, especially when the humidity is very high. Again, as I said before, when the humidity is high, sweating might not be enough to keep you cool. So by going for a swim, 
you're helping to cool your body down with some nice cold water all over. And who doesn't love to go for a swim in the middle of the heat? Tip number nine is simply again to use a cooling towel and make sure to keep it wet to help increase evaporative cooling. Tip number 10 to help you stay cool outdoors without air conditioning is to use or create a makeshift fan to help you cool off. Now for this purpose, I tend to use my butt pad, which I always carry with me and just fan myself like this. It's a great way to stay cool and uh, bonus points if you can get somebody else to do this for you. Okay, so in terms of the type of clothing material to wear to help you stay cool, here's a very quick breakdown. Cotton and other natural materials like hemp or linen tend to have really good breathability, good wicking, and good absorbency, but they tend to get soggy and lose that breathability the wetter they get. They also tend to have lower UPF ratings than other materials. Now synthetics on the other hand, like polyesters and nylon, tend to have pretty good to excellent UPF ratings and they're really great at wicking. However, they're just okay with breathability and they don't absorb much moisture, so they tend to feel really clammy. And when you're in really humid environments, that just kind of exacerbates that feeling and also that uh, makes you feel a little hotter too. Now because they don't absorb much moisture and they dry in less time, they're also not very good as cooling towels. And last but not least, well in fact it, we're saving the best for last, and that is merino wool. Now merino wool in general has really good UPF ratings and in fact all of our products have been tested and they have at least a 45 if not a 50 plus UPF rating, meaning they have really good to excellent uh, UPF uh, factors in them. Uh, they're also great at breathability, they have great wicking, and they're great at absorbing moisture while staying dry to the touch so you don't get that clammy feeling. And this is why merino wool is our absolute favorite material and why it's perfect for helping you to stay cool in the hot temperatures outside. Okay, so now that we're outside, let's cover my top ways of wearing our products to help you stay cool both indoors and outdoors. So first up is our merino wool kerchief, as this is the one that has the most uses and the most versatility to help keep you cool. Now the first use is simply as a cooling towel. And to make one, all you need to do is just unfurl your kerchief completely, and then I just kind of fold into a loose triangle, and then spin it from here. Now the next step you're gonna do is to just dunk this in water and let it soak for a little bit so it absorbs all that water. Then when you pull it out, you're going to kind of squeeze out the water. You don't want to wring it because I'll damage the kerchief. I just kind of squeeze out the excess moisture and then throw that around your neck like this. So it'll be a little damp, but it'll help with more evaporative cooling while also helping to block some of the sunlight that's going and falling on your neck. So the first use is as a cooling towel. Now the second use is as a sun hood, and this is one of my favorite ways of using it in the heat. And so you're just going to fold your kerchief into a triangle and then simply fling it back over top of your head. Now this works better with a hat because the bill of your hat will help keep the kerchief kind of out of your eyes a little bit more, but you can just kind of let it hang like this or tie it into you know, a light knot like that or even tuck it into the straps of your backpack. And what that's gonna do is provide a lot of great sun protection because of the high UPF factor of the marine wool material itself. But while you're walking along, it's gonna allow kind of the cooler breezes to get in there, get trapped and help cool you down. But it's just a really nice way to keep the sun off while also being able to expel a lot of heat coming off the top of your body and your head. Tighter hoods are not gonna do that. They're gonna sit more constricted around your face and that's going to just make you warmer. So a nice, wide open, loose sun hood is the second use for the kerchief to help you stay cool. Now the next use is what I call a blanket wrap. And this is really the best way to get the maximum amount of uh, sun protection and coverage from a kerchief. Um, now this is, I would use this if I was out in an exposed area for a long period of time. You know, say I was stuck, you know, in, in a desert or something and I needed maximum amount of shade. What I would do is just, uh, totally unfurl the kerchief like this, throw it back up over your head, and then you can either kind of let it sit like this, and it's gonna provide a lot of sun protection for your back, uh, or if you're moving, you can just kind of tie this in a very loose knot, and again, kind of get some of that sun hood protection, but just kind of a lot of overall coverage for your body in the hot sun. And uh, this is what, again, what I would use to stay cool if I was in an exposed area for a long period of time. Now additionally, kind of the next use is just as an all-purpose uh, sun cover. So you can use your kerchief in many different ways to just kind of block the sun where it's hitting you. So say it's hitting your legs a lot, you could tie this around your waist like a sarong to keep them protected. Uh, I've just kind of uh, hung it over the front of my body before if the sun was really beating down on me or if I needed to kind of just 
create a shade in a certain way just to block that sunlight. And again, the single layer of material provides a uh, UPF rating of uh, 50 plus, so it's really good sun protection. It's gonna let very uh, low amounts of the hot sun come through and burn you. Uh, so this will provide a lot of great protection. Plus it never wears off. You can do something like this, just whatever part of your body is exposed to the sun, you can use a kerchief to kind of lightly wrap it and give it all that uh, fantastic sun protection. Now this next use may seem a little counterintuitive, but it's using your kerchief to wear as a head wrap in the hot, hot sun and high heat. Now this is similar in principle to sauna hats in, uh, in Scandinavian countries in the really hot saunas and where they sauna all the time, they wear thick wool hats to help protect their head and insulate it from overheating. So you've got lots of different options here. Really one of the most basic ways you can do this is to take your kerchief, fold it into a, a triangle, fold it into a triangle again, and then just simply you know, throw it up over your head like this and tie in the back. And that's gonna provide lots of layers of insulation uh, for your head and help keep you cool, believe it or not. So again, this is like a, uh, like a sauna hat. It helps insulate your head. Uh, if you look at the uh, Middle Easterners, they tend to wear their uh, kerchiefs or schmogs on their heads just like this in the hot sun, just to provide lots of great sun protection, but to help insulate their head from overheating in the hot air. And with all those uses, you can soak your kerchief in water and wear it or use it in all those different ways to get some additional evaporative cooling. So it just makes them a lot more versatile and effective at keeping you cool. Now next up is the handkerchief, and uh, though it's smaller uh, than, the, uh, than the regular kerchief, this still provides a lot of great uses to help you stay cool. Now the first, again, is as a cooling towel, so just fold your handkerchief into a triangle, or your handkerchief into a triangle, just twirl around like that, and then soak it in water. Uh, again, you still want to do a quick dunk. Uh, Merino wool has a water-resistant outer, uh, but a water-loving inner part of its fibers, so you really need to hold it underwater for a long period of time so those fibers can maximally absorb the water. And then again, you're just going to squeeze the excess water out. You're not gonna wring it, and then just throw it around your neck or wherever you want to feel that additional evaporative cooling. Now next up is one of my favorite ways to wear the handkerchief to stay cool. It's actually one of my favorite ways of any of them to stay cool, and that's as a sun cap or Sahara style cap. And to do this, all you need to do is completely unfurl your handkerchief, take your hat off if you're wearing one, and then throw it over the back of your head like this. And then uh, I like to make sure it's a little, a little even down here. And then throw my hat back on. And what that's going to provide is basically 360 degrees of sun protection for your head and face. The bill of your cap is blocking the sun coming from this way. And then the handkerchief is kind of blocking the rest of your head, face, and neck from getting exposed to the sun. It's providing great sun protection. It's absorbing a lot of sweat. Uh, and some other key benefits is, if you tend to wear ball caps that have more of this kind of mesh style in the back, that's great because it allows your, your head to breathe and the heat to escape. But when you're in the sun, that just means the sun can come right through there and burn your head, which you don't want. Wearing the handkerchief under your hat provides incredible sun protection that way for these style of caps. It still allows your head to breathe and dump that excess heat. Um, and help you stay cool. Now some other, the other key benefit that I found while wearing this is as you're walking along, the, uh, the air tends to flow in there and it creates kind of a nice like little bellows or fan effect. And at the same time helps block bugs from getting in your ears or bugging you all day long. So a really great, really handy uh, way to stay cool. Now I do have to give you a word of caution. You're probably not gonna wanna do this with a cotton bandana. If you have to as a last resort, that's totally fine. But cotton bandanas have very, very, very low UPF factors. So they'll actually let in a lot of heat and a lot of sun, which could cause you to burn. So don't uh, rely on cotton bandanas to provide the sun protection that you really want. You definitely want to get something that's, um, that definitely has a high UPF rating with it, like a merino wool handkerchief. Now next up is a great way to stay cool if you happen to not have a hat with you when you're outdoors in the hot sun, and that's as a do-rag. So kind of like the Sahara style cap, what you're gonna do is take your handkerchief, open it up completely, and then throw it over the back of your head. Get it where you want it. And then with these ends here, you're simply gonna tie them around in the back of your head. Now, you, while you won't have a full 360 degrees protection from the sun, you're still getting a lot of protection for the top of your head, the sides of your face and neck, and also the back of your neck. If you soak this in water, you'll get a lot of really great evaporative cooling as well, 
So while it's not as effective as wearing um, the handkerchief under a ball cap, it still provides you a lot of great protection when you're outdoors in the hot sun. Now another great use that I'll show you is, as before with the kerchief, as a head wrap. And again, this is what you want to use when it's really hot and unbearable outside to help insulate your head from overheating. Much like you would throw um, you know, your favorite soda or beer in a cooler stay cool, this is providing an insulative layer around your head to help your head stay cooler in the hotter sun. So without a cap, the easiest one you can do is just fold into a triangle like this, flip it over your head, get it where you want to, and then just simply tie the ends in the back. Now what's great about our handkerchiefs is that they are actually bigger than a normal bandana. So they're 25 by 25 inches rather than 20 by 20. And what you get out of there is some additional coverage and protection. So by wearing it this way and having kind of a longer handkerchief, it's just going to uh, fit a lot better in the back, especially if you have a bigger head like I do. Now another key tip you want to do is to not tuck the tail end of the handkerchief into the knot back there. You want it to be open up and, and kind of free flowing. You'll still get great sun protection, but as you're moving along, it just allows the back of your head to vent a lot easier and a lot of that heat that's building up to escape from back there. So the last use I'm gonna show you today is using the handkerchief as a head wrap to help you stay cool. Okay, and last but certainly not least is our hooded neck gaiter. Now while it's a little less versatile than our kerchief and handkerchief to help keep you cool outdoors, it still has some really, really, really great uses to help you stay cool. And the first one is, again, as a cooling towel. So you take your hooded neck gaiter, you're gonna soak it in water for a little while to let it maximally absorb all the water that it can, pull it out, squeeze it out without wringing it, and then you can either drape it around your neck, you can actually wear it around your neck if you want to, um, kind of like up over your head like that, um, or anywhere you need additional evaporative cooling on your body, you can place this like on your chest when you sleep at night, like I mentioned before, uh, just really great uh, use for that that's a little bit smaller than the other two products. Now the next use is probably how you see a lot of neck gaiters being used uh, in like those Florida or off coast uh, fishing pictures, and that's as a sunblock. So you can actually wear the hooded neck gaiter around your face and head. And you can put your hat back on and then get some really, really, really good coverage for uh, your head and neck. Now what's beneficial about the hooded neck gaiter over a regular neck gaiter is with that articulated built-in hood, you can actually get a lot more kind of coverage uh, and protection than you can with a very basic, simple neck gaiter. So lots of great coverage back there. It's helping to block a lot of the sun. It does add a little bit of heat because it's trapping some of my um, hot breath inside of here. But when you're out in the sun, you've got no shade, this is one of the best things you can do to create um, a barrier between your face and the, the hotter weather outside of it. So this is as a sunblock and you've got lots of ways you can do it. Um, like I said, or if you just want around your neck, you can do that as well. It's just a little warmer. It's not my favorite way of wearing a neck gaiter uh, to stay cool, but it's definitely helpful at keeping the sun off of you as much as possible. Now, next up is as a do-rag. Now, again, this is a great use if you don't have a hat with you when you're out in the hot sun. And to do this, you got a couple different ways. Um, you can do it is you can take the hood like that, leave it open, you're just gonna throw it back up over your head, and you're gonna put the hood over top of your head, just like this. So the top of my head and my forehead are completely covered, protected from the sun. If I want to, I can kind of pull this down, get my ears in there as well, and then I'm getting lots of great uh, sun protection in the back of my head and neck. So, because it's a thin, just a single layer, it's allowing my head to breathe, uh, so I can stay a little bit cooler that way. It's providing a lot of protection for my head and my neck, but my face is still exposed, so I want to make sure in an instant like this, I, I have uh, plenty of sunblock on my face and my neck here to help keep my skin cooler in the, uh, in the hot, glaring sun. So this use is as a do-rag. You got a couple different options. Like I said, you have this way, and then the last one, if you don't want to wear it that way, you can just take the end of the neck gaiter like this and throw it over top. Um, and still get a lot of great coverage this way. I like the other way more because I think it does do, does do a better job covering it. But if you just have a basic neck gaiter, this is how you basically do a do-rag as well for the same effect. So um, ideally you have a hooded neck gaiter because you're gonna get better coverage and protection. But if all you have is a basic neck gaiter, then this is a great way to keep your head and neck uh, cool and protected from the hot sun. And the last use I'm gonna show you today for the hooded neck gaiter to help keep you comfortable in the hot sun is as an arm sleeve or leg sleeve. Now, I actually discovered this when I was on a buddy's boat. We were out in the middle of a bay and it was hot, um, and the sun was just kind of beating down 
on just my one arm. So I just need uh, coverage for my one arm. And so I had my hooded neck gaiter with me. So all I did was take it and basically just slide it up my arm. And uh, you can either kind of hold it in place or if you have like a hair band or rubber band, you can put that around your arm uh, to keep it covered. And then the rest of my arm, I can just kind of tuck into the hood like this and get complete uh, coverage over my arm. So there you have it. My best tips to help you stay cool both indoors and out of doors without air conditioning, plus my absolute favorite ways to use our products to help you stay cool. If you ever have any other questions on how to stay comfortable outdoors, please don't ever hesitate to reach out. And in the meantime, be sure to check out our other how-to videos on the how-to page of our website and also on our YouTube channel. Until next time, stay cool.